All right, no doubt you are familiar with red states and blue dogs, but what about pink elephants? Now, there's a new command headed for K Street, and Dana Perino has this story. Thanks, Sean. This November, the American people will vote on all 435 seats in the House of Representatives, about a third of the seats in the Senate, and several governorships across the nation. But what is it about these midterm elections specifically that could make them one for the books? This year will be remembered as a year when common sense conservative women get things done for our country. The real story, as you mentioned, ladies' night. Women candidates making victory speeches across the country. But let's talk about the women. Republican women, baby. Republican women. Republican women are storming the nation and now are set to have an overwhelming presence in the 2010 elections. Among some of the races being most closely watched, Carly Fiorina is taking on longtime California Democratic Senator Barbara Boxer. Also in the Golden State, Meg Whitman will challenge Democratic nominee Jerry Brown for the title of governor. And in South Dakota, Christy Nome hopes to defeat incumbent Democrat Stephanie Herseth Sandlin for the state's only House seat. I'm not one to sit in the background and just place votes. I think South Dakota definitely needs people who will stand up and, and be a leader and speak out. Then there's Nevada's Sharon Engel, who faces a bitter battle to unseat an increasingly unpopular Senate majority leader. What was it like, the decision-making process, when you decided that you would run against Harry Reid? I was looking for that person who would be a contrast to Harry and I was hoping that that someone would appear on the scene, but it, it turned out to be me. And all eyes are on South Carolina, the state that could soon see its first female governor and rising GOP star, Nikki Haley. You know, the fact that I happen to be a woman and the fact that I happen to be Indian was different, but that is not the reason that we won. It's, the, it's because the people of South Carolina stepped up and said we want something different. We want a, a government we can be proud of. Haley's overnight growth and popularity could be, at least in part, thanks to a crucial endorsement in the final weeks of her primary campaign from fellow female Republican Sarah Palin. Sarah Palin came and endorsed you, and it was really helpful, maybe helped push you over the edge to the wind. She really was the start of getting people to understand the power of their voice. And the fact that she was going out there and really looking for good, strong, conservative people to run is a great thing. She did not have to endorse us. And the fact that she came in when I was not the predicted person to win and said, these are the kind of people we need to get elected is very important. And I think that not only that, I'm looking at what other women I can turn around and help, what other elected officials are conservative that could really make a difference. This November will see record numbers of Republican women running for office. 82 for the House, 12 for the Senate, and 10 for governorships. That's more than double the number of candidates that ran for each office two decades ago. This is one of those cycles where it appears that there's a lot of women stepping forward. That's what I'm doing, and I think that women across the country are doing. They've been running businesses, raising families, and now they're speaking out for the citizens of this country. I think it's important for everybody in your demographic to be represented, and so women do bring a different perspective uh, to any discussion that's being had. We want to talk about issues. We want to talk about solutions, and we want to be stateswomen uh, just like there are statesmen. We're wanting to just have our seat at the table, not based on our gender. But why the sudden surge? You had strong businesswomen who really understood the fact that government was going in the wrong direction. They didn't want bailouts. They didn't want stimulus packages. They wanted elected officials to be more accountable. It was all of this message that was going and returning government back to the people. I really think that's what it was. And if women happen to be the messenger, I love that because we need more women in office. They've done so much in balance so well for so long. How do these women in particular find that delicate balance? Same way women do it every day. They balance finances, they balance home, they balance everything else. We have to change hats a lot during the day because we do have, lead such full lives and, and, and we like it like that. Thankfully, being a woman in politics doesn't mean having to deny also being a wife and a mother. For these women's families, it's all just part of it. And what did your kids say? Well, they said, absolutely, Mom, you need to do it. And they recognized that their mom was willing to run and to make a change, and they wanted to be a part of it. I would not be able to do this if I didn't have the family that I have. You can't let all of this become a distraction. This is just a job. At the end of the day, I'm back on the couch eating a bowl of cereal like normal people do. Family not only continues to play a central role at home, it's also one of the major factors driving these women to run for office in the first place.
It seems like it's kind of a mom awakening in the last year and a half where women are rising up and saying, no, we've had enough already. As I've traveled all over the state throughout the primary, that's one thing that people keep talking to me about. What about our children? You know, we need somebody who's going to go there and fight. I have 10 grandchildren and I wanted to leave something to them besides debt and deficit. But running for office can be hard on a family, especially the negative attacks and female politicians often find themselves a target of the mainstream media. They're morons I'd like to forget. There may be limits to her appeal. I think she's an empty vessel. This is the gift Harry Reid's been presented with tonight. This was just one of the outfits that Sarah Palin wore as Alaska's governor. The cover photo on your magazine, it's sexist and a wee bit degrading. When a picture surfaced of Sarah Palin in running shorts, it made the cover of Newsweek, which begs the question, why in this day and age does the media still have a double standard when it comes to covering men and women in politics? We are scrutinized <laughs> for what we wear, for the way our hair is, for our makeup. The Newsweek article that ran, that has you on the cover, it talked about your saffron colored suit and the way that it fit. I thought it was funny that they cared what suit I was wearing. I think that, you know, they talk about that because we still have few women in office. The more women we have, the less they'll care about what we're wearing, and they will pay more attention to what we're saying and what we're doing. And at the end of the day, all of these women are really just trying to do the same thing. Listen to the people and give them back their government. It's always surprised me how much apathy there is. And this year, there's no apathy. Right. Everyone's engaged, and they're really focused in on what the problem is and what they see the problem is as this good old boy politics as usual. It's a, a corruption that they're really uh, just sick and tired of. We knew from the very beginning it was us versus the establishment. Um, I don't want a house full of Republicans. I don't want a house full of Democrats. It's the mix that makes it work. And that's true for men and women. It's true for Republicans and Democrats. We should celebrate this because the more we bring to the table, the more good debate we can have and a better government will have. It's the power of their voice that's going to change this country. This is the silent majority that will no longer be silent. Look out, Washington, because there's a whole stampede of pink elephants crossing the line in the ETA. Stampeding through is November 2nd, 2010. A lot of women coming together.